Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers. And today is Friday, April 20th, 2012. Now I'm reaching the 100 Q&A video. And once I reach the 100 Q&A video, I'm gonna take a break for a month from the Q&As. I'm still gonna be posting repair videos and things like that, but I'll just be taking a break from the Q&A videos. It does take a lot of time during the week to prepare it. It does put a little bit of pressure on me to have it ready for Friday. Sometimes I get really busy. So after two years, I'm just gonna take a break. And then when I come back, I'll be refreshed and ready to keep going. And again, I wanna welcome all my new subscribers. So the first question for today is somebody took apart the carburetor from their weed eater. They found that the screen inside the carburetor was plugged. So they removed the screen completely. Now the weed eater runs good and they're wondering if they should get a new screen or just leave it without the screen. Well, the answer to that is you should replace the screen or clean the one that you have. If you keep running it without the screen, you could end up blocking little passages inside the carburetor that are impossible to clean. What I'm gonna do now is show you a carburetor so you know exactly the screen that I'm talking about. Now here's a two cycle carburetor and the screen I'm talking about is right here. What this screen does is it filters out any dirt before it reaches the needle valve on this side of the carb. So you want to make sure that you put it back in there. It's there for a reason. Now if you buy a complete repair kit, it's going to have the screen included in it along with the diaphragms. And again, I can't stress how important it is to have that screen in there in your carburetor. Now while I've got this little carburetor in my hands and showing it to you, I just thought about a question that I often get. And the question is, where is the idle screw located on my carburetor? There's three screws and I'm not sure which one it is. Well, it's the big screw on top over here. This screw here does not affect the air fuel mixture of your carburetor. All it does is adjust the idle speed of your chainsaw or grass trimmer or whatever other equipment you're using with a carburetor like this. So don't worry, if you play with this screw, you're not messing up the adjustment of the carburetor. If you turn it in, your engine's going to idle faster. If you turn it out, it's going to idle slower. So always look for this screw. If you're not sure, take the cover off your equipment and look at the carburetor to make sure that the screw does not go inside the carburetor. These are the two screws over here to adjust the carburetor. In my next question today, YouTuber tells me he's got a steel MS250 chainsaw and the bar is not getting any oil. Well, the first thing you should check are the oiler holes on the bar itself. Sometimes they get clogged and the oil cannot get through to the bar and chain. Here's an older bar from a steel chainsaw and the oiler hole I'm talking about is right here. And you'll notice there's one on each side and sometimes they get clogged up with sawdust and the oil cannot penetrate to go over here and lube the chain and bar. So always check this first before you do any other repairs on your chainsaw. Now sometimes you may still not be getting oil to your bar and chain after cleaning the bar. So what you would need to do in that case is check the oil line and also the oil pump. Here's an actual oil line from a steel MS250 and what I've noticed that happens sometimes on these chainsaws is inside the fuel tank the line's going to kink like this. The weight of the filter will just kink the line and then the oil cannot get through. In that case, the best thing to do is to replace the oil line itself. And the part number for that is 1123-647-9400. It's fairly cheap to replace. Sometimes it will only kink over like this when the chainsaw is in a certain position, so it may be hard to tell. Now, if you don't have much money, then you should replace this before the oil pump because it's significantly cheaper. But if your problem still persists after replacing this and the oil filter at the end of the line, then you will need a new oil pump. And here's an actual oil pump from steel. And this one's 1123-640-3200. Just a tiny little pump, but if it's defective, it's not gonna pump oil to your bar and chain. Sometimes if you run your chainsaw without any oil for a prolonged amount of time, you could end up damaging it. So those are pretty well the only reasons why your bar and chain may not be getting oil on your chainsaw. And if you're subscribed to my videos, in the near future I will be posting an actual oil pump repair on a steel MS250 and I will be showing how to replace all the parts that I just showed you. 
And my next question, a YouTuber emailed me the other day telling me he's got a three horsepower horizontal engine with a clutch on it and he's not sure how to get the clutch off. Well, I've got a horizontal engine here with a clutch and I'll show you how this one comes off. What you need to do to remove this clutch is remove the set screw over here and usually what you need for that is an Allen wrench. So you just reach down, loosen this little bolt, you don't have to take it all off and then your clutch will come right off. Sometimes you may have more than one set screw so you want to turn it all around and make sure that there's no other screws to be removed. This one here is just a blank hole so all there is is just one on this clutch. And that's it. And you may want to pry the clutch with two screwdrivers, one on each side, if it's hard to get off. Sometimes they get rusted and they're really hard to get off the shaft. You can also spray some penetrating oil where the set screw is. And also on the shaft right here a few days before you do it, if it's really hard to get off. And that should help. Now my next question is one that I often get. And sometimes people email me telling me that their chainsaw or their weed eater will only run on the choke or only run with the gas or quick start that they spray in the carburetor. So they're wondering what could be the problem. Well, what you could do is try adjusting the carburetor first. You would want to turn out the low and H screw a little bit. That will give it a bit more fuel. You want to try it out like that first. That may cure the problem. If not, then what you need to do is replace the carburetor kit. And just to refresh your memory, here's the carburetor I showed you earlier. There's the screws I showed you earlier as well. The H screw is on the side here. And this is the L screw, the low screw. Just turn them out about a quarter turn each. It's a good starting point. And then try your unit again. If it runs good, then you know it's just a carb setting. And if it still doesn't run, then turn them out another quarter to a half a turn. And hopefully that will do it for you. If it still doesn't run, then just do like I told you, is replace the carburetor kit inside the carburetor. What's happening when you spray quick start or gas down inside the carburetor and it only burns what there is or will only run on the choke, it's definitely a fuel issue. It won't make any difference if you replace the spark plug on your machine or anything else like that. So that'll wrap it up for this week. Thanks for watching guys. And I also appreciate your comments, especially when they're constructive because they do help the other viewers out there who may be wondering about a certain thing. And it does save me from answering every question that I get because it's pretty well impossible for me to do that. So have a great weekend guys and make sure to come back next Friday.